Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corum and Mike Webster here with a look at the stock market today and this week and what we might expect in the week ahead. And just like my mic being muted initially, we're, we're going to talk about expectation breakers today because I think that was the theme of this market this week, Mike. It sure was. And that's a very important concept. And it's like you said, it's really going to be the theme of everything because yesterday we left with a clear expectation that we were, it looked like a, kind of like a, felt like a follow through day to me in that spirit. And then today's action closing, you know, down by yesterday's uh, lows, that's a, that's a serious expectation breaker. And then of course yeah. we went lower on other indices. I was referring to the NASDAQ. Absolutely. So let's take a closer look at the NASDAQ and the other major indexes. So the NASDAQ today down 1.6%, the S&P 500 down one and a half a percent. We also had the Dow today with a notable decline, notable declines across the board, the Dow down 1.2% and the Russell 2000, the hardest hit today down about 2.1% this week, uh, especially you know at the tail end of the week here, inflation woes, rearing uh, their ugly head again here, Mike. But let's rewind just a little bit and talk more about what you were seeing on Thursday with that spirit of the follow through day, as you were saying, because that looked pretty bullish. Thursday's gain up 1.7%, closing at the high of the day, definitely well in the upper half, almost taking out that downside reversal on Thursday, which I know you were tracking very closely. So with that kind of strength on Thursday, we would expect at least, you know, uh, maybe a follow up on that, but definitely not an undercut, like you were saying, is, which is what we got today. Yeah. So I was really expecting that we were going to take out the highs today because a, a Friday close, like we talk, always talk about, Friday close is very important and very meaningful. And there are a lot of old timers that uh, I consider myself an old timer that, uh, you know, really just focus on the weekly closes. Some people just focus on the monthly closes. So where you close for the week really dictates a lot of technical analysis and a lot of old older technicians. And so I was expecting we were going to break out because yesterday was really a combination of a, a setup day uh, as well as a uh, in the spirit of a follow through day. What I mean by a follow through day is Whenever you have a lot of distribution, which we've had a ton of distribution, Bill would always be looking for a follow through day to kind of reset the distribution count. Now, the original follow through days um, that he studied and, and developed his whole system around, those were at the bottom of bear markets and then very serious uh, intermediate corrections, you know, 15% or, or more. But then he started using follow through days whenever you got excessive amounts of distribution to kind of clear the decks. And that's what it looked like yesterday. Of course, we didn't have the volume, but that's a story for another day. But the we certainly had the price action on the NASDAQ, which had been starting to lag for the last you know few months now. Um, and SPY was the one that was was starting to lead. So I was focusing over there. You always focus on whichever index is leading. So kind of reverse what I was looking at and looked at the NASDAQ, but what's um, a helpful ETF to look at of, of what the real difference is, is the FNGS. And that's, you always hear about the MAG7, and this is essentially uh, equal weight, the, the big tech stocks. And that broke out yesterday. So that was telling you that those stocks as a group really were ready to lead again. And I personally, my opinion, which is worthless, I really thought they were going to kind of just follow the general market, but the rest of the market, the, the broader market was going to start lifting. But that didn't happen yesterday. So you just take what the market gives you and it really looked like we were gonna blast off today. Of course, we got some negative news uh, overseas and then 30 minutes into the market, we got some inflation data, inflation expectation data uh, that was bad. 
And so it just made a, a bad morning worse all day and the selling continued and we had a weak close. Let's look at the RSP, which is the equal weight of the S&P. And that tells you how bad the average stock was. So that fell through its 50 day. It was getting support there yesterday. The high is now well underneath the 21 day. So the average stock is looking um, very weak at this moment. And now let's toggle back to the S&P. That's at a critical area. And we'll, we'll circle back to this later. It's right at that 50 day. Um, and so since most people in the market focus on the S&P, not the NASDAQ, holding or breaking that 50 day will be very important next week. Yeah, definitely. And here's a look at the weekly chart. We're definitely testing the 10 week line, of course, no doubt. And then I want to circle back quickly to the NASDAQ on the weekly just to show where we are there. We'll, we're still slightly above the 10 week line and we'll show some more levels to watch later. But just right off the bat, looking at 16,000, the prior highs and the 10 week line, uh, a lot of congestion earlier around 16,000. So we're keeping an eye on that. But instead of you know continuing to zoom out, we're going to switch gears now and actually zoom in a little bit. So next, we're going to go to Webby's chart. So we'll cue that up here shortly. And now we're taking a look at the intraday chart because that Thursday uh, reversal bar from last week, this was something that we talked about on last week's show on IBD Live a couple of times, because that was such a bad reversal, we wanted to look at that midpoint, that 50% retracement level. So give us an update on that. And that's also what made Thursday's action really tricky because things were starting to turn positively looking at this measure as well. Yeah. And can you see the cues? On yes. That? Okay. Yeah. Got it. So this is a candlestick chart, interday chart of um, what was going on uh, with the cues. I Lots of times I like to look at the cues or the NASDAQ. They're essentially the same thing. This is the high from last Thursday. This is the low. And I really was focused on that because that was your very important day of last week and it kind of set the tone and really we needed to break out above it or break below it but of course the 50 percent retracement like we talked about the midpoint of that uh which is a, basically a 441 on the cues uh that was an important level to start trading above to know that we were in a, a position of strength right late in the day we were up there looked like we were going to take out those highs um you know, today, obviously, we gapped down and we closed in the lower portion. Now, cues are still looking OK. Uh, of course, this isn't the type of action that we want to see. But if you go over to SPY, they're yeah. not looking OK. We went even the RSP even worse. RSP looks terrible. right? <laughs> like there's no way to put any positive spin on that. That looks horrible. But let's go back to the S&P yeah. for a second. So this is just underneath those lows, but still it's underneath the lows when we want it up here. We want it at 520 and it's at 510. So that's a problem. So you always have to be flexible and adjust. We went home last night thinking one thing, then we come into today and we think something different, um, You know, just based off of what the market is actually doing, not what we wanted to do or what we expected it to do. Because as we said, the theme was, our expectations were broken today. Exactly. And I, I think I went a little out of order. Uh, can we go to the regression channel lines now, Webby, because that's something else that we've been keeping tabs on. So walk us through the SPY regression channel lines. Yeah. So hold on. So with this, um, the white line again, as we... It, you're not familiar with the regression line. You might want to um, go and watch last week's. But just to sum it up, this um, regression line starts on January 18th, and I've stopped it um, at March 28th, 50 days, trading days. And the white line is just a line of best fit. It just takes that data and says, okay, wh where is the perfect spot in between? That's a regression. And then I do a standard deviation above and a standard deviation below. The thought process is you're going to stay in that range until you break out of it. And then the, the trend has changed. So yesterday with that big move up, it looked like we were getting back into that range. 
and that we were going to start trending like that again. Well, that didn't happen, and now we're out of it. So going forward, I'm going to stop using the this regression uh, channel on SPY because we're no longer in that trend. And that's an important thing when you're using a regression. Don't just keep thinking it's going to bounce back in there. The trend has changed on SPYs. Now, let's look at the composite real quick, the NASDAQ. And you can see it could still get back in there We're using the same dates on there. And yesterday we were well back in the range. And that's why I was getting very bullish uh, because that's what the market was telling us. And this is the area where you want to get bullish. If you're using a regression line, you want to get bullish when it's coming in to the green area. But it, when it falls out of it, you've got to switch gears and go, mm -hmm. you know what? It broke our expectations. So we need to adjust and, um, you know, uh, I don't think I put it one on the RSP, but you can tell that it would have been a, yeah. well below um, that. So the regression, to sum that up, the regression channel on SPIES is dead. The NASDAQ is holding on by a thread, but it's probably going to be dead unless we get a, a big gap up on Monday. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting to me, Webby, and we're going to go back to our market surge charts now, uh, is that we're actually, we broke expectations today from yesterday, but we're actually going back to what our expectation was before, which was a trip to the 50 day, which yep. was the potential for a couple days below it. So now we can actually look at some historical precedents, one of which we have been focusing on on this show on IBD Live as well, which is the 2003 precedent for the NASDAQ, which will go there. But you also have some other historical dates that we're going to pull up and walk people through of expectation breakers and just uh, things that you're looking at that might be helpful to leverage for decision making in the current market. So I find that interesting, right? We're, we're going back to one of our original expectations. Yeah. So um, before we talk lower to the 2003 uh, on NASDAQ, just cement in your mind what's going on with the S&P right here. We, we had that nice three waves down. Um, we had this nice move up. And now this is our first test of the 50 day. Uh, and this is after that bad Thursday, that bad downside reversal, this was our expectation. It was like that was a shot across the bow. We thought we were going to do this, but then because we're flexible and Bill taught us to do it day by day, that we had to switch gears when we saw strength. Now right. we're having to back away from that. And that can be frustrating for people. And I realized that you know even people around Bill would get very frustrated with how quickly he'd have to move, but that is the strategy and that's just how the system works. And it's just based off of how the market works. So now we can go back to the NASDAQ uh, back in 03. And I want to do it just on the day that would be the exact same mm -hmm. as where we are right now, if that precedent holds. Yes. Which is 8 5, 2004 is where uh, we're going three. to. Oh, 2003. I mismarked it. That's <laughs> where we're going to start with our little historical journey here. Back yeah. To so just like what we were just seeing with the current spy, um, you know, more than 20 years ago, we had the three waves down, nice move up. Then we, and you can see in there, we even had a downside reversal um, right there, you know, but then we moved higher and, you know, then we came back down. And so this is where it looks like we are. So why don't we just fast forward a month and see what ended up happening or to the end of the year. That's fine. Yeah. So you could see it broke the 50 day, was mm -hmm. down there for a few days. I think um, Justin sent me a count that was like 7.6%, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that it pulled well, back from the highs. Yeah. And then it just drifted up. It didn't have this big move up until you got back your low back above the 21 day. That's when, um, you know, the momentum was really there. But we could see that if this precedent holds now of course precedents aren't you know they're not magic but this is our roadmap um for right now yeah 
All right. Well, now we're going to go uh, forward a little bit to 7-1-2004, correct? Yeah. So this is an expectation breaker. So I wanted it, uh, Charles Harris, uh, Justin, and I created this thing called Market School uh, that's available on IBD as a home study. And one of the things when we were doing the original research for that, that we came up with were these expectation breakers. It was something we couldn't really model into the market school rules, which are all black and white rules. It was one of those things, you know it when you see it. So this is a great example, July 1st of 04, of an expectation breaker. Because the day before you were going into new highs, you assumed that you were going to then take out that old uh, 2079. That would have been very logical for you to keep running up there like that. But something changed and you had a big down day about what we had today. Now, fast forward a couple months to see what happened. And you could see that from that, it marked that expectation breaker. Yeah. From there, then the selling just came in. So there's an old saying, there's the quick and the dead. So on a day like today, when you have an expectation broken, you want to take quick action. It doesn't mean this is going to happen, but it could happen. So it's better to be just like yesterday was better to be doing some buying because it looked like we were breaking out, looked like we were going to, we were having a follow through day like event that you needed to take action then. And then unfortunately you got whipsawed. I got whipsawed. Um, you know, anyone who's trading aggressively did and you have to back away um, because this could happen. And then there's a more extreme example that we're going to look at. Exactly. So we'll go to 11, one, 2007 yeah, and exactly. yeah, very similar. This was the expectation. Yeah, this was the date that got the three of us thinking of an expectation breaker of, you know, what is, you know, the day before you thought you were off to the races and another leg higher. But then on that day, the character of the market changed. That is like the most aggressive um, uh, in most extreme case of an expectation breaker. That's not what we saw today. It wasn't that dramatic but go out of you know six months from there um and you can see what that was the beginning of the terrible bear market i'm not saying that that's what we're in for i'm just saying today was an expectation breaker so you have to take action when you see that because things like this can happen absolutely yeah and now we're going to bring it back to today and we're going to go back to webby's charts once he gets some levels on the current nasdaq because you mentioned how you uh we're talking to justin about the 2003 precedent with that 7.6 percent pullback so it's like all right well what would a 7.6 percent pullback on the nasdaq from the current highs be right uh, and on SPY as well. So why don't we go there and take a closer look at that? Okay, so here it is on SPY. And before I asked him for those percents um, that I was really just too busy to do on my own, I do know how to calculate a percent, believe it or not. It's okay. Uh, He's our market research director, you know, put put him to work with that yes. stuff. And right. the best dude around. That's dude around, One period. One um, so uh, with this, I just like to put different levels on there um, of, you know, places where it should stop or if it doesn't stop that, um, you know, you know that you're in for more selling support areas. So I use the low here of March 5th. I use the low of February 13th. And I use the low of January 31st. Those were my key levels that, you know, I thought, okay, if it doesn't stop here, then it's got another uh, level that it can go below. And then I was thinking about the 03 example. And Justin said that uh, the, the amount would be 484.67. So that would put it right in here in this range. So underneath this level, but above this level. That to me, we just looked at that chart that seemed pretty aggressive. So visually, without doing the 
the, the math on it, it seems like this area over here would be a logical place if this precedent holds more like the, the 40491 in that general area is what I'm expecting near term until I get more evidence next week. You know, who knows? We could get some great news over the weekend and we bounce or we could get a lot of selling on Monday. You don't know. I don't know. And we'll just take it as it comes. But this is a, an area where if that precedent is holding, the, um, I think it should stop. If not, it looks like we could fall all the way down here. Now let's go over to the composite. And here are the levels that I'm using there. Um, the dates are March 5th, uh, February 21st, and January 31st. And so the level that would be similar, the 7.6 would put us at 15,279. So right in this area, um, right gen generally in this area. So again, underneath our second level, but above our third level. So just something to have in the back of your mind, of course the market doesn't have to uh, trade exactly like it did back then, but it's good to have something to just kind of give you an idea of what to expect and how bad that it could get. You know, you never know what news we get on Monday. Right, exactly. Because um, with these expectation breakers, it's great to have, okay, well, what could happen? The different scenarios that we could expect either which way. And as you're always so great about saying, Webby, being open-minded to any scenario unfolding because that's what's either going to help us, um, you know, get defensive when we need to get defensive and get offensive when we really should be getting offensive with an open mind. Yeah. And I think that's a very important concept. And we can go back to market surge, I think, um, that, you know, the bill was always telling all of us is that it doesn't matter. Don't don't care what you said yesterday. Like yesterday, I thought it was a follow through. You know, I thought it felt like a follow through. That's why I said I stand by it based off of the, the information we had. That's what it was telling you. Now, today we get new information. So you have to adjust and you, ha you have to be fluid. Otherwise, you know, you just kind of stick your flag and you go, no, yesterday I thought it was a follow through. So I'm just going to stick with that. And then you could go down with the ship. So you always want to, as he told me, bend like a tree in the wind. Yeah. And before we take a look at those stocks that we're watching for different reasons uh, that provide some lessons for us in the current market, uh, Webby, it seems like right now a lot of the focus is on the macro side of things. So how do you... Uh, adjust your expectations with the different macro landmines that can be out there. I know that it's good to be aware of those things, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's a reason why we're focusing on the charts and not the Fed minutes or what the CPI numbers were or what the PPI numbers were, right? Yeah, or what the University of Michigan was yeah, today. today. Right. So, you're aware of the information because what you want to do is look at how the market is taking the information. So you don't have to get down into the weeds of the CPI report, like you said, or the PPI or the PCE or anything. You just want to look and say, okay, was this bad news or good news according to the market? And then what did the market do? So what you're always looking for is the market going up on on bad news. So let's say you get a really bad PCE report or a CPI report and the market opens low on that report and then turns and rallies. That's your best sign that the market has now factored that in and it's ready to move higher. There's always going to be bad news. There's always going to be conflicts overseas. There's right. always problems around the world. There's always problems in DC. There's always problems with the Fed. No one's ever happy with what the Fed does, very rarely, um, certainly not now in this cycle. And so, but the market can still go up. And so you just are looking at the day-to-day -day action of what the index is actually doing, not what you think it should do, but you are taking into account the news 
and just saying, okay, really bad news item, but you're not down much or really bad news item and you're down a lot. Well, that's normal. Um, so you're always just thinking what's normal and what's abnormal. Ho hopefully that makes some sense. It absolutely does. Okay, next on our list, we are going to check in on CPNG because it had a strong day-to-day -day webby up 11.5% by the end of the day. And this is something that we want to watch to see how this acts next week, to see if it can hold up or continue on that strength or if it starts rolling over and filling the gap. Yeah. So with this one, even if you never let, let's go to the weekly, because most people aren't going to want to trade or we can actually go out to the monthly to see the problems it's had. So this is certainly not a classic O'Neill uh, canceling type of position to be looking at. Now we can go back to the daily just to you know understand what you're looking at, something with a lot of overhead. But it yeah. broke out of this cup with handle on news, which mm -hmm. it had, it had news, fundamental news. And it went up, which is normal. Big move, one of the few things that was moving today. So you're watching this to get feedback on how breakouts are working. Because if this holds, it goes side, maybe it just keeps inching higher, or it just kind of, yeah, doodles around in that area for about a week, consolidates, forms some area of, of resistance for you to be able to get an entry into it. Uh, that would be ideal. But it, you don't really care if you own this or if you're going to buy this stock or not. It's more about the market feedback. So if the market is healthy, this should at least hang in there or move higher. If the market is weaker than we think, this will just probably just fail next week and, and be well underneath 20, um, if not close that entire gap by next Friday. So you're monitoring these things just like, the other stock, um, one of the other stocks we we're going to look at was ANET. And that was unusual action today. This is an example of what you don't want to see. And let's go out to the monthly on this. Yeah. Because this is quite different. This is a classic O'Neill type of stock, a classic IBD can slim name where you had this nice move back in 16 to 18. Then you had another move. The RS line has been very strong. This is a stock that we all like to trade. But now let's go over to the daily and see the action. So the only news that I saw on this was um, a downgrade. So when you get a downgrade, you expect the stock to be down maybe 2 3% depending on the downgrade. But this is down you know, almost 9% on the day when it's a big quality stock like that. That's giving you a sign of what the market is thinking right now. They're just shooting first and asking questions later. This could base build and come out of it. But let's just say you're not in this stock. It's still giving you feedback of how are the leaders handling themselves. And this is a, you know, this is a red flag. Yeah, definitely. And probably the biggest tell that we are looking at in the market right now is NVIDIA. This is the AI chip darling in the market. And one of the reasons why we were getting pretty positive on the market uh, on Thursday with the follow-up action, it's hanging in there right now. So this is also going to be potentially a pretty big tell in terms of what happens with NVIDIA from here. Yeah, and just for compliance reasons, I have a position in this. And, and I didn't do. And we put it on Swing Trader. Uh, we had to reduce some of the position today just because of what was going on in the market. And we had to reduce a lot of things and, and cut a lot of things on Swing Trader just because of the reaction of the feedback we were getting from the market. But this, as I, I said on IBD Live, is, is really if you are a poker player, you're looking for the tell from another uh, player, an opponent. And this is kind of the leading stock will give you a tell. And I think everyone can pretty much agree this is one of the leading stocks. Most people will think it is the leading AI stock and the leading stock of this bull market. So you're paying close attention. And the last few days has acted perfectly because I thought it was going to come into 800 and um, you know test the 50 day. And it didn't. It was very strong. We had you know two nice blue days this week. 
broke that downtrend. And so our expectation was, okay, this is back off to the races. It's in a gray area, a little touch of gray with this one right now. And what was positive about it is it was able to hold yesterday's low. It was an inside day. Yes, it was down, you know, almost 3%. But given the context of what it did over the last two days, that wasn't that much of a, of a give back. So I'm going to be following this one closely, not just because I own it, but because um, this is the leader and it should hold above this, it, um, this low from uh, this week. Unless we're, we need more time, it may be some base building um, or a bigger correction. So one of the things Bill would always have the, the PMs do as kind of as a group is go through the leading stocks in the market and, and say how many of them are have broken and how are they acting and kind of look at it as a, a percent. And that's why I brought up the, the ANET, also the, the Coupang, just to give a, not the Coupang was a, a uh, a leader, but just how new emerging stocks are handling themselves. And then, of course, more importantly, what the leadership is doing, the Microsofts, the NVIDIAs, the Metas of the world. If those start breaking, and Amazon was acting strong this week, if those start breaking down, then you know you're in more for uh, something bigger than what, we, what we're expecting. Right now, we're just expecting, you know, maybe that seven, you know, 7% off the top uh, pullback or maybe less than that. Uh, but always we're going to stay flexible. Again, NVIDIA is kind of the key in the market right now. It absolutely is. Okay, Webby. So any thoughts in closing as we look to wrap up this week and look ahead to next week? We do have earnings season starting to pick up steam. Yeah, with the earnings, I wouldn't get too hung up on, you know, one stock gapping up, one stock gapping down. That's just how things act these days. But you want to look at more of the mosaic. Look at all of all of them together and say, is this starting off to be a good earnings season or a bad one? We had J.P. Morgan fall this week or, or fall today on earnings. Um, that doesn't necessarily translate into what an NVIDIA or any of the other uh, mega cap tech stocks are going to do. But as we start getting the tech stocks in the next few weeks, that's going to give us a lot of feedback too on not only what the CEOs are saying, but more importantly, how the stocks are reacting to that. So in summary, what I'd say is we had an expectation breaker today. That means that you need to be much more cautious, in my opinion, until we get some, uh, let's just go back to the NASDAQ just for a sec. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we're, we kind of have these two big bars in there now. We had last Thursday and we had yesterday. And so those, if you look at the chart, they, those really stick out. So we need to either start trading above them, them or below them. Uh, now the worst, you know, the most difficult would actually be if we just chopped back and forth. And we call that like a Arusha and I, I think, or maybe it was his uh, phrase, he'd call it a chop fest. And where you, you know, you start going up, you think it's going to go higher, and then it stops and comes back down. Those are the most dangerous. So now that we've kind of had this warning sign um, today with this expectation breaker to make any big moves or be very bullish, I would want to go over on a closing basis yesterday's high. Uh, and, and what we're thinking is that we're probably going to go underneath last week's low and then um, you know test underneath 16,000. Above all, be flexible. Do your homework this weekend. Um, look through a lot of stocks. Uh, yeah. Do your 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 screening. Um, I would screen for anything this week that had a high closing range on a weekly basis. That means that it was you know closing at a, you know 70 percent or higher on a weekly. That's an option within uh, market surge uh, that you can do screens on. I would do stocks that are above their 50 day above their 200 day and that have a, a closing a high closing range to see where people were hiding or maybe where some money was flowing to get your watch list. But you're probably going to be sitting on your hands a lot early next week unless we get some major moves yeah. um, to the upside. 
All right. Well, thanks, Webby, for all of that. And thanks, everyone, for watching. That is it from us for today. But we, we will be back on Monday, starting with IEBD Live 10 minutes before the opening bell, investors.com slash IEBD Live for all the details on that. More homework. Check homework. out. Check out how to trade in stocks from Jesse Livermore, recommended by Webby. Check it out. And it's a must read. Yes, we. It's a must read, and that is it for today. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday and next Friday with Mike Webster. So we will see you then.